this Wednesday night service. Hallelujah. We are here to give God glory and give God praise for all that he has done for us uh, this week. Um, today is Wednesday. It's a new day, so we're here to give him all the glory. Yes. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb yes. and by the word of our testimony. Thank what you is your God. testimony this evening? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm ready to just give God praise. Hallelujah. Is somebody here with me? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's give him praise this evening. Here we go. I just want to give you my praise right now. No matter what comes my way.
There's so much power in the blood.
rescued my soul. Yeah. So no matter what, no matter what, what's going on. Father, this evening, we just want to thank you. We want to praise you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. We bless you. We glorify you and we exalt you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all that you are doing on our behalf. We give you praise and we bless you. We glorify you and we honor you. Father, this evening, we just thank you again for what we know your blood has done. The price you paid for our deliverance, from our liberty, from every hold of the enemy. Thank you for that prize was total and complete in and of itself. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, for any one of us that is experiencing any form of darkness, we just thank you again because we look onto that blood and the efficacy of that blood and what it can do, O oh God, concerning our situation. We thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for uh, leading us in worship. We thank God for your ministry and all that you are allowing God to do uh, through you. So, um, this evening, I just want you, or I want us this evening to just quickly uh, do a summary on what we learned on Sunday, or what we heard on Sunday, all right? And uh, in, that, in this summary, I just want us to just look at three things, specifically that were emphasized, and after that, we will just uh, 
go into a time of prayer uh, concerning all these three things. And uh, these are the three things I want you uh, to be aware of. Number one is fear. Number two is prayer. And number three is community. So we're looking at these three things this evening. Uh, fear, prayer, and community. So uh, last week, Wednesday, one of the things that we prayed about consistently and for a long time was about fear. And I remember giving you an assignment if you are if you are a consistent, you know, uh, viewer here. Uh, but if you are not, I will repeat that assignment, and I want you to uh, just be um, uh, faithful or committed to doing this. And that is, I want you to get a piece of paper or get your device and write down your strongest fear. Write it down, whatever that fear is. Because see, what you don't know, you cannot confront. But you need to know what you are against. If you are, if you, you see, th there's no army that goes to war and they don't make a proper assessment of what their situation is. And if you're experiencing any kind of fear, you're in a war situation. Amen. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> and just like a natural army, you need to get to a point or a place where you really make a proper assessment of what you're actually against and not just a mental accent of what you're against. I need you to really, really know that this is what I'm against. And one of the ways that you can uh, come to the point where you know what you're really against is to be able to write it down, write it down, put it down. What is my fear actually? Ask yourself these questions. Because sometimes you might just be afraid and all you're looking at is just a general fear and you're not narrowing it down. You need to narrow it down because uh, uh, somebody says when you read, it makes you a broad person. When you write, it makes you an exact person. When you think, it makes you a deep person. So you have to move from broad to what? Exact, narrow, and to deep. And that is what sitting down to write helps you to do. It brings out all these three things. All these three things, it brings them down together. So I need you to be able to sit down, think of your situation, write it down, and say, God, I am afraid of my husband. I am afraid I'm going to lose. I'm afraid I've been on this journey. Just whatever the fear is. And I've dealt with people who have all kinds of fear. And sometimes you are wondering and you are like, man, why is he afraid of this? But that is what is bringing down the darkness upon that person's life. Mm -hmm. And if you don't identify your fear exactly, it will be difficult for you to really, really fight it. So again, please, take something out. If you're, if you're, if you're like me, you write on your devices. I, I like to write on my device. Write your exact fear down. If you write it down, visit it from time to time, not to, you know, romanticize it and just, you know, uh, and look at it again and say, okay, this is my fear. No, but you want to put it where you will see it, where you come across it every time, and pray and just thank God that you have overcome that fear because God has not given you the spirit of fear. And you see, some of the problems with us is that we generalize everything. When you take scriptures and you say, oh, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear for what? Because my fears can be different from what my brother's fear is. So I need to bring that scripture down to say, God, I thank you. You have not given me the spirit of fear concerning blah, 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 or concerning dash, but of power over this and love and of a sound mind. We need to do that. We need to do that to be able to overcome this fear. And God will help us. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that's going through any kind of fear, whichever way it is, oh God, whether it is subtle, whether it is overt, whether it is covert, whatever way those fears they come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come against them this evening. And we declare that your blood that you shed is sufficient for us. And we thank you, O oh God, because your love covers every fear. Father, we thank you this evening.
that as we journey in our lives and we begin to follow the things that you desire for us, we thank you because fear will not be an impediment for us to be able to come to the reality of that which you want us. Fear will not cut us short. It will not bring about a shortage of experiencing the abundance of all that you have for us. Father, we thank you. We bless you, we glorify you, and we exalt you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You see, this is so important because I want you to know, I want you to understand or remember what was said on Sunday, that a lot of the issues of life that we face that are contrary to us, the contrary winds that we face, a lot of times are a result of fear. They emanate from fear. They have their foundation in fear. And if you can live above fear, you will almost always live above every form of darkness Amen. that the devil is directing towards your side. Amen. So we need, we need to be mindful of that. We need to be mindful of that. All right? Now, we'll just quickly go through uh, to, to, to uh, prayer. Now, we have understood and we saw what prayer does. And then from prayer, that led us into community. But I just want to talk about prayer this, morning, this evening and let you know what prayer does. Look at what Paul said in the book of Philippians 4, verse 6. He said, be careful for nothing. All right? And nothing means everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And guess what he said? Look at the results of that. Look at what results from that. He said, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. I want to tell you this evening, my brothers and my sisters, my friends and everyone, that the path to peace is prayer. If you are going to go on that highway of peace where you enjoy the peace of God and begin to embrace the peace of God and begin to walk in the reality of the fullness of God, the Bible clearly states it. I mean, there is no ambiguity about this. Amen. He said it clearly that when you pray and you supplicate and you give thanks, he said the peace of God that passes all understanding will surround your heart and your mind. And guess what? I've not seen anybody who has the peace of God, enjoying the fullness of the peace of God, and has mental illness. Because in and of itself, our mental situation are a result of the lack of the peace of God. When the peace of God is present in our lives, it drives away every darkness. Because darkness cannot stand or withstand the peace of God when it's around. I, I, I go back again to um, um, uh, uh, Jesus with his disciples when he was there, you know, on the river, and they were in the boat. And guess what? Every one of them was panicking. But Jesus was at peace. And the evidence of that peace was that he was asleep. So if you are not sleeping, you don't have peace. One of the things that God has allowed us, if you want to know who is at peace, somebody who is expressing peace, you know that some, the person knows how to sleep very well. And you see, one of, the, uh, one of the symptoms of mental illness is insomnia, you know, the fear of sleep. If you have that this evening, please just write it down. I'm afraid to go to bed. I cannot sleep. Because if you cannot sleep, you see, uh, the way God regulates us, the way things are, the, the, the way things are now, uh, sleep a lot of times does not just completely translate into peace because sometimes you can oversleep to overcome some of your fears and all of that. that, that that's not it. That, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about the peace that you have. That you are not afraid of anything. It is not because of fear. It is not because of insomnia. But everything that is in you is at rest. That is that you are in that state of homeostasis. Guess what happens? God created sleep as an evidence of that peace that he has given you. And I want you to know this evening that God is invested in your peace. God is invested in your peace. And in fact, that is why he made it one of the fruits of the Spirit. And because he has made it one of the fruits of the Spirit, it means you are qualified to be at peace. And the Bible is telling us now that if you are not at peace, 
if you are careful for anything, if there's any reason why you are careful and you need the peace of God, the highway to the peace of God is what? Is praying. You have to get to that point where you pray. You can kneel down, you can pray, you can commit everything to God and say, God, I know I don't have an answer to this. I don't understand what is going on with me. I don't know what wisdom I need to use now. However, I know that you have created peace for me. And because I have that peace of God, I begin to walk on that highway where my heart is garrisoned and nothing can pierce through my heart and bring me to that point of darkness. And I want you to know that as you begin to get to that point where you make prayer a habit, where you make taking things to God a habit, like the writer says, he says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our needs and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Not some things. You see, some of the problems that we have is that we think that some things we can solve. Yes, we can solve them, but God is still interested in being a part of it. That's what the songwriter is trying to tell us. That we take everything to God in prayer. And Paul confirmed it, or the songwriter confirmed what Paul is saying. He said that in all things, he said be careful for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. By the way, thanksgiving and supplication are a form of prayer. All right? So by prayer and by prayer and by prayer, let God know what your heart request is. And his peace will guard and garrison your heart. I just want to tell you this evening, and I want to agree with you, that if you are not experiencing peace, that God wants you to experience peace. And I agree with you tonight, or this evening, that God's peace is your portion in the name of Jesus. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, that clears away all your cares, and brings about the burden of Jesus, which is easy and light, he said. Be yours this evening in the name of Jesus. I just declare that and I pray that over you this evening. Declaring that God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you till the end of the day. That is what he said. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to agree with my brothers and my sisters this evening. I declare and I agree with them that it is well with them. That from now on, you will help us to be able to know that nothing is too big and nothing is too small to present to you. That you want to hear from us. You want to hear us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus for every situation and every circumstance that we're in. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. Because you are helping us to come to that place where our heart is ready. To be naked and unashamed before you, O oh God. Yes. And present our request before you, O oh God. No matter what they are. Father, we thank you that you help us, that instead of us running away, we are running in. We are running towards, oh God, to be able to present our cares for you because we know that that is the pathway to peace. That is the pathway to our hearts being guarded and garrisoned, oh God. Father, we give you praise. We bless you, we glorify you, and we honor you in the name of Jesus we have prayed. And the last thing I want to talk about that we heard on Sunday is community. Community is so, so, so important. And one of the reasons why sometimes we fall into those kind of, this kind of situations or mental illness comes is because we don't have people that we relate with, that we interact with. We are all by ourselves alone in this world. And God has not created us that way the way we heard on Sunday. And community is not, because sometimes, you know, you're wondering why people don't want to be in community or why people are not interested in community. And it may be, you know, for any reason, some of us is just pride, I can do it myself. Some of us is just shy, we're just shy because we don't know how to interact. For some of us it's just, you know, whatever reason it is, I just want you to know that God wants us to be intentional like we heard on Sunday in building community. God, want, God wants us to be intentional. If you are alone by yourself, you will fight alone. All right? Now, there are benefits and there are downsides to it. And I'll tell you, if you fight alone and you win, you win alone and you take all the boots by yourself alone. You make it. However, God help you if you lose. There's nobody to share the burden with because you are alone by yourself. And you're carrying a load that you cannot by yourself bear. But this evening I'm telling you, 
Because sometimes we have this idea that, oh, one with God is majority. Yes, one with God is majority. All right? But God walks through people. The God that is one walks through people. God expresses himself through people. And I want you to know this evening that you cannot fight it alone. Look at Peter. As anointed as Peter was, Acts 4, the Bible tells us, 23, he was so anointed. But Peter did not in himself say, oh, I'm so anointed, I don't need company. Right? When they went to the Pharisees, or they went to, you know, where they were questioned and all of that, and they gave them instruction, they said, this thing you're preaching, this, in fact, there's one translation that calls it propaganda. This Jesus propaganda you're carrying all over the place. We don't want you to share it anywhere again. We don't want you to say it anywhere again. But they refused. But guess what? You know why their boldness was there? Because they were bold. Why they were bold outside? Because they had company behind. The Bible told us in verse 23 of chapter 4, Acts, he said they went back to their company, King James Version. He said they went back to their company to go and give them a report of what had happened. I wonder who you are giving reports to. Do you have people in your life where you can give reports? Yes. Is it, it's not because you're anointed. Peter was anointed. In fact, he was the head of the church. But he still took himself and still went back. The Bible says they went back and they reported to their company what good things the Lord has done. I, there are people in your lives that you can tell that there are good things that are happening to me. And there are people in your life that you can tell, I'm going through this situation. We had a meeting on Saturday morning, men's fellowship, the men's group. We had a prayer meeting and all of that. And one of the guys that you would think was the strongest guy amongst us was telling us how he was suffering from PTSD. How because of his deployments and all that has happened in his life, that he has PTSD. Anytime it is time to move, to travel, he just has this paralyzing fear. Military guy. People have thought that this guy had trained, had done everything, you know, he, he should not have a problem. But you know what happened on that Saturday morning really, really encouraged me? And that is that everybody began to learn from the reports that he was giving to his company. Amen. He brought a report back and he was reporting to us. Now, it might not be a good report, but what he had back from the group was an encouragement to him that God was still in charge. Yes. And it was also an encouragement to the brethren also. It was an encouragement to all of us because somebody actually said that I thought you were one of the strongest person here. If you can go through it, then I know that I'm not alone. Amen. Just like we have been taught. Amen. There is something that company does for us mm. that you in yourself in a thousand years will not be able to achieve what two will achieve. That's why the Bible says one shall put a thousand to fly and two shall put ten thousand to fly. Just two alone will put ten thousand to fly. So you need company. And may I put it this way also that sometimes before you get into some battles, there are some ways you win battles before you get into them. And so, like I told you when I was starting, that some of these mental issues that we have were in a battle of our lives. And sometimes the reason why we have gotten into this battle is because we never started with company in the first place. And so we thought that, or we always think, that I'm the only one going through my issue. Nobody else has the same kind of issue I have. Or I will have to fight this alone. I don't have to share this burden alone. We need to spread this burden, whatever burden it is. And it makes it lighter, easier to fight, easier to run, easier to function. And our lives becomes better for it. Two are better than one for they shall get a reward for their labor. This evening, who are you in company with? You need company. You need company. You really need company. Um, in closing, before we pray, I will just tell you, one of, one of the things that has helped me in life the most is that I've always had company. My wife is sitting here. Before we even got married, I told her, meet this person, see this person, see this person. They are people that we need in our lives. And guess what? Even when we had issues, because there are times that we cannot do it all by ourselves. Amen. We get these people into our lives. 
And they give us perspective. They give us views that we, we have never seen or we, we may never have seen. And with that, we're able to resolve our issues. We're able to move forward. We're able to do better. We're able to be stronger for that. Company will not hurt you. It will only help you. And I want you to be a person who embraces company. Because there, God dwells. In fact, the psalmist says, see how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is, it is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron to his skirts. I'm just paraphrasing. But I want to tell you, both in the New and the Old Testament, company is important. God has placed value on it. And for workmen, this is the way we are going to grow stronger, deeper, and better in the way we do things. Amen. No one person can raise strong family Amen. and serve global community. Amen. It has to be a company of people that are united as one. And that's why we are all calling ourselves here and saying, hey, let's be one. Let's work as company. Let's be intentional and deliberate in making sure that this vision that God has given us becomes a reality in our lives. That is what I want for you this evening. So let's pray this evening. Let's pray for company. We'll pray for yourself that whatever it is that is stopping you, whatever it is that is hindering you from becoming a person that embraces company, God will help you to overcome those things. Are there things that are personal from you? Are there things that you are fighting for? Are there, are there things that you don't understand? That this evening, God will help you to come to that place where you embrace company. And you are intentional about building a community. You are intentional about building company. You are intentional about doing the things that will make people want to flow towards you. And you can walk with them. You can live with them. You can act with them in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody, anything, is there a behavior, or whatever it is that is hindering you from building company? This evening will come against them in the name of Jesus and will declare that your understanding, your eyes of, the, of your understanding will be enlightened and will be opened to embrace the importance of not being alone and being in a community of people. Father, this evening I just want to thank you. Thank you for what you have taught us on Sunday and what you are teaching us through this series. We want to bless you. Thank you for opening our eyes. Thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. For we know that no, one, no matter what darkness it is that is hovering around us, we thank you because your marvelous light is available for us and we are walking into that light. But we know, God, in the name of Jesus, that our ability to walk in that light in reality rests on the fact that we can overcome fear, we can pray, and then we can build company. Father, we thank you because like, like, like the psalmist said, that is where the peace of God rests, in company. Father, we just thank you. We bless you this evening. Thank you for the grace groups at Workman in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what they are doing. We are building and knitting together our hearts, together in Christ. We are moving forward. Every joint is supplying, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we thank you for your raising men and women here at Workman who know the importance of company and we are doing it intentionally. And we are deliberate about it, O oh God, in going about building companies. We give you praise and we bless you. Also, God, we just want to thank you, God, for work fun. We bless your holy name. Thank you for what you are doing here in this community. Uh, we bless your holy name. Thank you, God, because Jesus is alive and well here. And we thank you for your presence is real here in the name of Jesus. Everyone going through one form of darkness, we thank you, God, because we command, oh God, that the word of God will break apart all this darkness. And God will arise in the hearts of people. As you said in your word, that until this star comes, and the day star arises in our hearts. We thank you because we begin to see this manifestation of the day star arising in our hearts. And like you declared, that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. This is my prayer tonight for everyone that is going through any form of darkness, any form of issue, any form of oppression of the enemy. We thank you, God. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And we're not just waiting, we are walking towards that light. That light that bring us deliverance, that bring us understanding, that leads us into the safety of what you have for us. Father, we bless you. We give you praise and we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Before I leave, I just want to encourage you. 
also take note of everything we have said, study the Word of God, pray, and above all, go to our website. We have a lot of resources there that can help you if you're in any of this kind of situation and you need help. You don't need to be ashamed. You don't need to hide. Go there. You need help. If you need help, you need help. And there's no need to sugarcoat it. There's no need to, you know, to um, uh, just, you know, say it anyway. But I just want you to know that there's help for you. There's re there are resources there that you can go and look through, and God will help you because my uh, prayer for you is that we are all coming out of this darkness together. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.